We live? We good? Awesome. Hey everybody, my name's Adam. I'm here running the parkour.com podcast. This is the first episode. The vision is to bring parkour pros, coaches, visionaries, people deeply involved in the industry, bring them on the podcast, pick their brain, find out their history, their ideas, and, uh, and just have some great conversations. This is episode one, and we have Joey Adrian. I can't really think of a, of a better guest than Joey. Joey and I go back uh, a bit of a ways and uh, just have a lot of respect for this man. So, Joey, thanks for joining us. Yeah, no problem. What's up, everybody? I'm Joey. And, uh, yeah, we go back a long ways. Uh, I think you were maybe not one of the first people that I met starting parkour, but, like, close to. Because you were still running the gym, right? You were still running mm. Revolution Parkour when I started. And that was the first gym I ever went to. So the first time I went to the gym, I met you. And I may have met you at one of the meetups before that through Nick. Interesting. So was, it's been a long time. Because okay, I, I, I'm going to tell you my first memory of you. Uh, but I wasn't sure if that was when I was still involved with the gym or when I came back after going to France. Was mm. that – what year was it? Was it 2010 then or something? 2010, 2011? Oh, my God. Uh, what is it? It's 2023 now. I started 2009 or 10, somewhere in there. So, yeah. Oh, 2010. Okay. My memory is – and this might be like one of those fake memories because, you know, our brains are malleable. But th there was like two vaults set up and you like – I don't know, you ran in, you jumped on one vault and then jumped. It wasn't even like a Paul Crew move. You were just like a running and then like a, a running standing broad jump type thing. Yeah. And it, I was like, oh man, dude. And I must have talked to somebody or a bunch of us were talking and we said, this guy has hops. And he, the way you moved was clearly, I think it, it was kind of confusing that you hadn't been training a long time, but I don't yeah. but you hadn't been. And I know. You, you, you had a talent and you had a physical ability and uh, it's, I don't think it's surprising that you became as good as you became. Although some of the things you did, I think, are very surprising. So that's a credit to you. That's a long time yeah. ago. Holy moly. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that that sounds about right. Like, honestly, I don't remember the exact time. But, yeah, I remember that whole from, from, like, my first session through, like, that first year of training. I was mm -hmm. just like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm I'm going. Like, that's this is what I'm doing. Uh, and I think I, I think I kind of lucked out too, because I've I've wondered this a lot. I've wondered this a lot. Um, I like did have I did have like a bit of a talent when I started for sure. I was also like 18 or 19, so like mm -hmm. I was a relatively athletic person. Um, and I always wonder like if I sucked at it. I don't know mm -hmm. if I would have kept doing it. Like, it was just like, <laughs> I was that kind of person where like, I really liked getting better at stuff until I hit that first like plateau. And then when I hit that first plateau, I was just like, yeah, all right, I'm going to find something else to get better at. Cause I just like that, that grind, that progression grind. And, uh, with parkour, it was like, I hit that, like, like basically everyone that was like helping me start, uh, could just like teach me more and more and more and more and more so i never really hit that plateau until i was like deep into it and at that point i was like well this is just what i'm doing but i wonder if, if i had been a little bit worse if it would have uh, affected that maybe it wouldn't have stuck yeah exactly when was that plateau do you remember was there a moment or a day or a year or something shoot um honestly i don't remember everything happened really fast from my memory i, I was in like a, a I was a whole different person back then. So it's a little bit, mm. it's a little bit difficult to think back. I, I had, I had a whole story. Um, mm. But like, yes, yeah, so some of my memories, they don't, they're not a uh, cohesive. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was a long time ago. And uh, back, back in the day, back in the day, mm. uh, before I started, I drank a lot. And really? I am pretty sure I have a ton of memory loss because of that um hmm. so it's hard to piece like everything together but i do remember yeah. that like within the first maybe five six months uh you know you remember nick bishop mm -hmm. oh yeah oh yeah. Yeah, yeah the wrangler nick the wrangler he's got like have you seen him on instagram uh dude yes what 
He's got also, like a couple hundred thousand followers. He like goes and picks up wild rattlesnakes. Yeah. He's, he is like created this brand. He's awesome. Dude, I never thought. Crazy, he, that was the craziest thing. Crazy. He's got like uh, the one video that has like 20 million views or something where he's like got the rattlesnake like on his lap or some, some, something crazy he, like that. He's like, he's like, don't move. Don't move. I'm not going to move. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's crazy, man. Uh, also, I just I lost uh, sound in my headphones. Can you not hear me? Can you not hear me? I can hear you through my speakers, but it's kind of hard. Oh, crud. Uh, well, we'll just keep going. I don't know what to do about that one. Yeah, we just keep going. Tech That's issue. Um, anyways, yeah, what, yeah. What so, about him? Yeah, what about him? Yeah. So so Nick Bishop was like the first person that I met because I, I heard about parkour. A buddy of mine was like, hey, there's this thing. He was showing me like kong vaults over my mom's truck like the hood of her truck Um, and so we were doing that and then he was like yeah it's called um it's called parkour like you should look it up i was like okay cool so i looked it up and i was like whoa this is sick like i really like this because i always like jumping i always like climbing i always like doing that kind of stuff so i was like cool let me look into this um somebody had mentioned like Mm meetup.com uh to like look for meetups and so i went on there and saw that there were like local media meetups that uh nick bishop was hosting and i was like okay well i want to go to one of these but i don't have any friends that do this with me and i am i'm gonna feel horrible if i go and i'm like absolute garbage so let me like look up a couple vaults let me get the basics down let me learn some stuff so that i don't go looking like an absolute noob which little did i know that's kind of what it was built for was to teach me those basic things so I wasted about a month or so kind of teaching myself the basics <laughs> uh, and then went out there and they were like, oh, whoa, yeah, you, you've done this before. And I'm like, I don't know what doing this before it, like, I don't know the level. I don't know anything. So I was like, yeah, I mean, I taught myself a couple of things, but that, that was my introduction to Nick. Um, mm-hmm. And then I started training, you know, weekly with him through the meetups. And then even more than that, I was like, yo, who's trying to go out like every day? That's when I met sam stringer who Mm -hmm. was like my main training buddy uh he was i think 12 at the time and i was like 18 so that was weird but like we just went out and we trained and that's it we didn't even talk we didn't even have conversations we just trained for like two three months uh anyways you fast forward a few months and uh at some point along the way nick left to california he was like Mm -hmm. yo i'm going to california i'm gonna go you know do the stunt thing out there you know Mm -hmm. do his thing right Mm -hmm. um and me and caleb were the most this other dude caleb that was also coming to the meetups um we were the most consistent that came to the meetups and the most like about it and he had started like this this pro team with us uh so he was like would you guys want to take over the meetups and we were like yeah that sounds sick let's do it um we got really hyped about it promoted the hell out of it like everywhere that we could we were putting up posters we were like it, pretty much everything that we could do aside from like paying for advertisements we were doing uh and to, to, the, for, for what reason to make to make the meetups bigger were you trying to start classes just i don't people? i don't know i don't, don't know, know. <laughs> we, dude we were just hyped like that's all, <laughs> so much was just like we were just so excited we were like yo we're taking over this thing we love parkour we want to teach parkour to all these people like it's such a cool thing all these just like it, i love it pure hype love we it. had no plans and that's your love man it's just like it, outflowing of love for the movement exactly yeah. so so we do that um nick dips and then on our, our first meetup that we were hosting uh the meetups kind of had like a 30 minute to an hour like coaching session um mm-hmm. for like anybody that was new we would teach them the basics so they kind of got a handle on it and then we would all just jam together and that's that's what we did most meetups were maybe six to ten people uh our first meetup with me and me and caleb we roll up to the spot and there's like 35 people there no way and it was it was um clackamas transit center yeah so like yeah there was like we weren't sure we literally like pulled up parked saw all these people and we're like they're probably waiting for th- no way no way they're, they're probably waiting for, waiting the, for max. the train, train <laughs> yeah. max comes and goes and we were like holy shit and we sat in the car for like 10 minutes and we're late because of that 
but we get out and that was just like a huge crash course into like how to coach classes uh basically because it was just like 30 people that me and nick both had to talk to and and you know wow. they, they were all strangers all random strangers wow. it was crazy um but that was yeah that was that was my first go into running a meetup do you think if you if you did that today you think you'd get the same amount of people or was there more of a hype in that time for this new thing called parkour i i think there was a lot more hype in that time like people people were just hearing about the word parkour like yeah. very few people knew about it and i didn't even know that there were like youtube videos i didn't know that or wow. I, I don't even remember if youtube was around, no, if there was there wasn't that many man there were there weren't that many yeah no. like, not at all and so i i didn't know that parkour was like this big thing i kind of thought it was local and a little bit smaller and i, I had no idea right i, oh, I just had funny. no idea funny. um but yeah i think back in that time like everybody heard parkour got excited by it and they were just like yeah sure a free thing let me go check this out i don't think it would be that big like nowadays because more people have heard about it it's you know i it's, think it's like a thing now you know and it's, it's like if you want to do that thing you go thing. do it if you don't then you don't like and you know what it is there's videos you've seen it on tv or whatever yeah i'm with you there i think yeah yeah but that was crazy back then i tell you what <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, what a crazy time, man. And I want to say something about the memory. You, you talked about like having a maybe memory loss or whatever it may be. When I think back to things in the 2010, 2011 timeframe, it's like a dream. It, like, I've, it's like a different lifetime almost sometimes, some of the things I was doing. And so I totally get it. I think sometimes that's just how time works with the passage of time and such. Yeah, that's and, – and I can't – like I don't have – have the best memory and most things that i have like of mm -hmm. just kind of blur together and i'm like mm -hmm. i it was at some point and if someone tries to pin me on a time there's right. there's no chance there's no chance like my time frame is a bunch of years ago about a year ago and like a month ago anything <laughs> that's in between any of no those way. i have no idea oh that's funny and that's that's just it <laughs> Well, speaking of time, here's an interesting question I have for you. So you start parkour around, let's say, 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, six years later, you compete in the Red Bull Art of Motion in Santorini. You get third place. It's been seven years since then. So there's there was less time between you not find, not even knowing what parkour was to being like on the world stage winning or you know podiuming it at the biggest event in the world. And now there's been seven years since then. It's been more time that's passed since then. What was the buildup like to get into the art of motion? I know for a couple of years though, you really wanted to get in it. I think maybe your your passion waned a little bit, but you still mm -hmm. put out a, an online submission. Then they picked you up. You got through the qualifiers or something. Can you tell us about that journey? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. That that was. Um, so yeah, I, I remember. I remember pretty much most of that. Or I don't know the exact time frame, but like I remember the feelings and the stages of it. So. You got to remember, like, back then, for people that are relatively new to training, like, competition is a thing now. Like, people just do competitions. Nobody right. questions it. it. It is what it is, right? People also do flips. Nobody questions that. It is what it is. Back back in the day, flips were questionable. People were like, oh, man, I don't know. I I, I stay away from flips. I like the pure, pure parkour stuff. And so that's yeah. when I started. And I loved flipping. I was literally learning wall flips as I was teaching myself Kongs. And so mm. I've always liked flipping. And that was always a little bit weird with some people in the community. They were like, nah, I'm a purist. I just I just do parkour. Sure. And they kind of looked down on like the flipping stuff. Uh, same can be said about competitions. Uh, that was that was a big, like, yeah. almost a big no-no back then. People a huge no-no, yeah. Yeah, people no -no. didn't really like competitions, especially around like 2010, 2011. Um, that being said, like, I, as soon as I knew about Red Bull Art of Motion, I was like, dang, that seems like the thing to do, right? Like, it, it was it was almost like, here is the path, right? Mm -hmm. And I all I wanted to do, the only thing that I cared about when I started was training. That's it. All I wanted to do was train. Literally nothing, out, nothing else. Um, I was, like, dropping out of school. Literally, I, I did drop out of school. 
Uh, and the reason I dropped Whoa. out of school was to train. Uh, I was just like, I was already a super senior at the time, uh, going to an alternative school. I had already dropped out once, um, had switched schools. Wow, I didn't going know to like credit recovery school. And then um, I was like one credit shy or something like that. And I was talking to my like main teacher because everybody had like a main teacher as their like counselor person. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was kind of advocating for me ever since I started parkour because I was like, I was like, yo, I think I'm just gonna do, I think I'm gonna do this. I think I'm gonna be like a, a physical trainer of some kind or go somewhere into fitness because this is like, this is what I want to do for sure. And he was like, cool, you have a path. Like, here is that path. Go pursue it. Get the hell out of here. Don't, like, you hate school. Hmm. Leave. You have a path now. Go do it. If you ever need college, community college, then normal college, and you're good. Um, So with that, like, that's when I was like, okay, started pursuing the physical, what was it? Uh, What was it called? personal trainer route yeah like 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 nasm or something like that they have all those those. there's different certs and stuff yeah i was was doing i was doing those certs um and then i got offered a job at the gym from the revolution Revolution parkour from matt uh and then i took that and i was like okay cool this is what i'm doing um did did, did you graduate did you get your diploma nope Uh, i dropped out no no no, i didn't i didn't get my diploma uh it, it was a weird the credit that i needed i couldn't get it through summer school and i would have had to like attend another year of school basically oh so you're like screw that i'm I'm, just like screw that like get me out of here well that's Um, hilarious so you don't have a ged or anything nothing oh my gosh that's amazing (laughs) you're the only person i know who doesn't have a ged or something from high school in this day and age that's amazing dude and you you never know it no, uh, no equivalency nothing nothing so but it worked i mean so far i mean it's working working well so far uh, I have a house. Look at this. This is my house. It's crazy. Wait, did your um, house? Did you yeah, buy this house? house? You own a house? Yeah. No, no way, dude. Holy moly. It's crazy, right? Holy crap, dude. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, sometimes I the, well, let's not get into like my, I'll rant on college and high school all day long. So let's not go there. Congratulations on a house, man. And I want to get there Thank too you. and talk about how you got to to Texas. Uh, one of the questions from one of our fathers was how did you, uh, where are you from? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's my bad. Bro. I, dude, I started tangenting. Uh, yeah. the, the art of motion stuff, the art of motion. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. We, t- <laughs> we're totally <laughs> okay. off topic. Yeah. Art of motion. Gonna have this. We should have, okay. First of all, me and uh, you should have had a conversation before this to catch up and then had this cause we're going to end up just catching up too much, but that's okay. Uh, whatever. Uh, whatever. That's okay. Yeah. Maybe we should have, uh, but whatever. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so, so that, that was like the path that I went right out of, out of mm-hmm. high school or whatever. Okay. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. I'm gonna do this. I got the, I got the. Um... Sorry, dude. Fuzzy. I got the. Um, there you go. The the job offer to coach, and Sorry. I was like, okay, cool. This is like a thing that I wanted. This is this is what I want to do. I love coaching because I was doing it with the meetups and all that. Uh, but really, want to do is just train all the time. And anything that allows me to train more, cool. Everybody always asks, like, oh, because, you know, we say we're going out to train. The natural question from somebody that doesn't do parkour is train for what? Like, that's always the natural question. And we're like, we're just training. Like, what do you mean train for what? We're just training. Um, I never really had an answer. Uh, some small competitions came up, and I was like, well, let me try these. And it was it was fun. I enjoyed it. Like, in, in um, uh, up in Seattle, it was like three hours from where I lived. Uh, went to a couple of those and like really enjoyed it and I was like okay cool I like this uh and at that point like I may be a year two years in something something like that I don't know um I was training so much that there wasn't many people around me that could teach me what I wanted to learn and so I would just have to figure it out basically so I was like okay I want to learn um, I wanted to learn like double backflips. Nobody, I don't, I don't know if anybody in like a 5,000 mile radius of where I lived could do a double backflip. Like <laughs> that, that did parkour. Clearly they, they were like gymnasts and stuff. Like gymnasts, but, of course. But even trampoline wasn't a thing back then. Like there weren't trampoline parks. Mm-hmm. Nobody knew about those. Like doing a double back on a trampoline, I had never even heard of. Like I, it wasn't even in my brain. 
So like all these things that I wanted to learn, I would just kind of start tackling and just figure out how to do it. Um, and that was how I trained. So once I found out about art of motion, I was like, well, shoot, like I, I want to compete and maybe I can be, uh, you know, a, a professional athlete. Uh, mm-hmm. since then I had gotten sponsored by take flight. Um, WFPF had interest, uh, some, some other things. So I was like, Oh, there's like, I knew nothing about sponsorships. I knew nothing about, I knew nothing about anything. Right. Every path, right. You're starting to I, see, I saw a path and everything that I thought might go down that path. Like this, this dream fantasy where like, I just train and my life is taken care of. Mm-hmm. Cause, cause I'm, I'm for lack of a better word, I was an idiot. I didn't know anything. Uh, so I just figured that if I got good enough, someone would come along and be like, here's money to keep doing this. Sure. And that was just, that was as much thought as I put into it. Uh, Art of Motion yeah. seemed like that that path. So I was like, that's what I'm going to do. You know, you weren't wrong. And I wouldn't call you an idiot. I would either call you uh, either naive or maybe just innocent. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, that was the hope for Take Flight was that we'd become so successful that we could find people like you who were, that we could just say, hey, here's a livelihood or here's, you know, enough to get by, yeah. you know, as one of your sponsors, like just keep being you. And we never got to that level, unfortunately. And so I don't think you were off. And actually, I brought you up in, in a podcast. So quick tangent, this WFO image you guys see in the upper what left to right hand corner is the company we're working with. We're partnered with them, the WFO.TV, and they're running kind of this podcast set up for us so we can this is going to get published on their website and we're also going to publish it on our YouTube. So anyway, I did an interview with them uh, for one of their podcasts like a week ago and I brought you up and I said, the thing that made joy unique was all he cared about was training and this, this will come out and you can see it. But I said like different from me, like I thought I cared about training. And then as soon as the opportunity came up to teach, I jumped into teaching. Then I jumped into take flight. And so when you look back on it, it's like Adam really didn't care about training. He cared about maybe the business side or at least to say I cared about that more than training because that's what I made the priority. But like you, Joey, like your priority one, two, three, four and five has always been training. And and it seems evident to me like so much so that you you even try to do other stuff. Like I want to talk about the app you tried and things like that. And it was just like you just can't get away from this black hole, which is which is the gravity that pulls you back and says, I love training. I want to train all day long. Can I just do that? Please universe provide for me because I don't care about anything else. I just want to do that. Like that's you to me. And I don't, it sounds like that's more or less accurate. No, that's, that's a hundred percent. I mean, you you talked earlier about like, you know, my move to Texas, for those that don't know, I moved to Texas from Oregon. um, And a large like portion of that move was to keep training (laughs) uh houses yeah. were cheaper so it was, it was a little bit easier to get a house i was looking to get a house um and then there was an opportunity with dj deandre jones who mm. you i met through you and take flight actually um mm. to to help run the gym out here and so i was like okay i i can run a gym i can get income and i can keep training and <laughs> training for what i have no idea and I, i've struggled with that for for a long time me and dj talk about it a lot I have absolutely no idea. And at this point, I don't really care anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I just I just want to keep training. Uh, so that's that's what I'm doing. And that's that's a bit bit of a struggle, like getting older now, because I'm 31 going on 32. Uh, mm-hmm. And like, yeah, it's it's harder to keep training. and It's harder to get gains. And it's harder to like, you know, you take a break when you're younger. You take a break from like learning a skill, let's say. And then you come back a week later to that skill or two weeks later and you're better at it. Like your, mm-hmm. your, your brain and your body has like digested it somehow to where it like understands it better. Now I take a break from training a move for a week and I am so much worse at it. Like it's not even really? funny how much worse I am at wow. it. Yeah. Uh, so I got to kind of stay on that grind even more. And me, me and DJ talk about that a lot because mm. uh, he's, he's super, he'll never admit that he's getting old. So I, I'm, well, I'm, I'm the one like, hey, DJ, we're, we're getting old, bro. And he's like, nope, isn't he, nope, you're getting old. I'm not getting old. Is DJ still in his 20s, though? Isn't he a little younger than you? He's 31. Oh, that guy. Man, <laughs> but he, I'll tell you what, though. He just keeps getting stronger and stronger. He does awesome. keep getting stronger. I, I just love to watch his progression because, uh, anyway, I'm a big fan of DJ. Yeah. So um, oh, so, so anyway, so you, you decide, you, you finally get into the Red Bull Art of Motion. 
you made a, you made the, in fact, we should play it. Jason, could you, could you play it? Could you uh, share my screen and play? And we can talk over this. And if there's something, Joey, that you want to like comment on or something. Yeah. Um, you can comment on if you want, but this, this is everyone. This is Joey Adrian's 2016 Red Bull Auto Motion submission. Oh, it is giga choppy for me. Oh, is it giga choppy? Yeah. Oh, it's, dang. I'm, it's, I'm well, seeing like 10 frames a second. Jason, uh, is it coming through clear for you? Because maybe it's just connectivity a bit will show. Oh, there we Whatever. go. That's, that's better. Can we can we hit the reset on it? Oh yeah, for sure. Because this this was this was cool. Um, I, I remember for like a year or two. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I was putting out videos. I was I was really trying to get in, and I was kind of doing me. I was doing my style. My like I liked flowing. I liked just moving right. Mm -hmm. And then that wasn't happening. That wasn't happening. I kind of gave up on the idea. I was like, whatever. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Right. I remember um, you saying that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I kind of just stopped caring so much about competing. And I was like, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm going to keep training. That's me. Uh -huh. uh, and then this year, I decided, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go all out. And I'm really going to train for this. And part of that was uh, Renee Scavington from from uh, Origins Parkour yeah, in BC. Canada. Mm -hmm. He offered to pay for me to go to do on sites because he was like, "No, you're gonna get in." Like, just, no way. Yeah, and Dude, I was that's like, "Amazing!" I, didn't I know was that. like, "No, don't do that. That's stupid. I don't think I'm gonna get in." Like, I didn't have the uh -huh. confidence that he had, but I, I told him, "Okay, I tell you what. Maybe if I don't make it in through, through the qualifier, through the right. uh, video qualifier." Yeah. So with this video, I was like, "I'm just gonna go all out and do the best of what I can do. I'm gonna take time." Um, I'm going to start filming, you know, six months beforehand and start racking up these clips so that I can, I can put out, you know, the best of me and some actual bangers. And so that first clip of the con gainer on concrete, like mm -hmm. that was one of the first ever done on concrete, I think oh, um, so that was, that was a big deal back then. Um, and then that second clip, I remember the double side, like long line, uh, mm -hmm. I went two days in a row specifically to get that clip because the first day I kept getting kicked out. And so I was like, okay, well, I can't do it. And then had my buddy Tyler come with me. And I was like, bro, will you come, come film this with me? Like, and we struggled for like four hours because people kept coming by and we didn't want to get kicked out. We didn't want to do this or that. And there were people on the inside like sitting on the tables so that I could only like practice half of it. And so I kept doing oh, this snap. part. I kept doing uh -huh. this part, hitting the palm flip. And then there would be people walking out of the bathroom. I couldn't <laughs> no. It. And I was just like, dude, this is getting so frustrating. And on one of the gainers across the table, uh -huh. I accidentally sent a cork and landed like on my, uh, on like my left thigh. And then my right leg came down and shinned the side of the table really hard. And I was like, dude, I, I don't know if I broke my leg or what, but like, it's kind of numb right now. I can't feel anything. And I was sure, I was certain, like right here, I accidentally you corked, corked it at, instead of gainer. You yeah, accidentally, I accidentally corked, corked it. instead of gainer, oh, and then clipped, clipped my leg on the corner of the table, and uh, no whoop. way, yeah, right there, smack. Yep. Oh, that's hilarious. So, uh, I, I thought, like, I thought my leg was broken or something. I had no idea. Oh my god, I, like, I can't feel it. Like, I can't feel anything. Like, it doesn't hurt, but like, it should. Like, this is mm -hmm. bad, and that always scares me. And I thought for sure the next double side that I was going to do was going to, like, break my leg. And so I had to do, oh like, gosh. three more until I was confident doing the cartwheel out of it. Mm -hmm. um, but after that, it, after that, the line was easy because, like, all the fear was gone. And then, yeah, the rest of this was just me trying to, trying to do the best things that I could do and not, like, I, I'm, I'm a guy that I'll settle. Like, as soon as I know that I can do it how I want to do it, I stop doing it. Like, I don't have to mm. prove to myself by doing it. I get to mm. a point where I'm like, if I kept repping this line, I would get it perfect. And I know that for a fact, so I'm done with it. And so whenever I make normal videos, I'll just do it until I get to that point, which is usually like one try, and then I'll post whatever that one try is. Because I care more about how good you are, or I did, care more about how good you were and how good I was after one attempt at the line hmm. than I did about how good are you after you get 50 attempts at the line. That's a pretty profound idea. Uh, Jason, we can end this uh, in the screen share if you'd like. I don't know how to end it. Um, let's, let's talk about that idea because that's fascinating. Um, 
And also, Jason, when uh, when Joey's talking, can we make him kind of the centerpiece so we don't have the, the split screen if that's possible? Um, my question, Joey, then is running off that idea. It's occurred to me for years and years, like maybe like eight years ago or 10 years ago, I had the idea that you only get to try a movement the first time, one time. And yeah. so it's kind of like, it's cool if you can finally hit that pre or whatever, whatever it may be. But if you can do it the very first time you try the move, to me, that's like extra cool. So anytime I'm about to try something, I take extra focus the first time. I almost always screw it up. And then I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. But the first time I try to do it, um, it sounds somewhat similar to what you're saying is that you're saying like the first time you do something, can you ex expand more on this idea versus yeah. versus perfecting it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for me, it's like uh, you, the way that you. Well, okay. I'll, I'll tell you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a tangent for a second. I'm sorry. Please I have to tangent sir. for a second. Anytime I'm talking like long form like this, I have to cover this this topic. Um, Please. I think a lot. I think a lot, uh, and I my opinions and my thoughts are always evolving and like i'm a strong believer in you will never be able to explain what you mean you never be able to do that you'll get close but you'll never be able to do the full mm. ins and outs of it um mm. so i tend to not share my opinions very often because mm. i i keep my opinions shallow like like i know what i think i know what i how i feel uh mm. but like explaining that i don't ever feel like I can get across what I mean. So I'm just like, eh, whatever. Like, why do you, why does whoever else need to know how I feel? And so that's why I tend to like keep my own opinions to myself and not, not really chime in on too much controversial stuff because I just don't care that much if people see how I see. Um, and it feels like really arrogant when I hear other people like kind of over and over chiming in their opinion i'm like dude it's not like it's it's honestly not important mm. that people know how you feel and that people think this the way that you think and like why is it i, I it comes off as as arrogant and i hate it so that being said um talking about doing it doing a line like first try or doing a move first try in my opinion your skill level, like what I would determine as how good you are, and I don't think about this too much anymore, but definitely the way that I used to think about it is what can you do first try? If I said, go go show me a line, like sure, you can look at it, you can, you can think about what you want to do, and you can look at distances and everything, but then boom, go. What can you do? That's mm -hmm. your skill level. Anything past that is just reps. Like you give you give anyone, anything, any whatever enough reps, they'll do it just as good as anybody else. Um, it shows true skill, in my opinion, to do it first try or second try. Like if you take more than that, I don't really care. And so that's that's Absolutely. the way that I trained for a really long time. Was just like. I, I might try a piece or try two pieces and then I would just put the line together and whatever came out, that's what I wanted to display. So that's when I filmed it, that's what I would post in videos because to me, that was my skill level and I wanted to convey what I could do with my skill level and that's how <laughs> I would do it. That's actually pretty crazy because what you're saying is when everybody else is posting videos on Instagram of themselves, like finally getting a move, Joey's at least historically, your Instagram was like, this is all my first tries. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's like, that's pretty mind blowing actually. I, and definitely historically, I would say like one to three tries maximum. Uh, and if it took more than that, I was just done. I just didn't care anymore. I was like, whatever, I'll do this another time. And then I would go to a different line. Um, and part of that is I just really liked the movement aspect of it. I liked getting to that flow state. Uh, and if I was, if I was doing the same line over and over and over, it was just like, dude, what am I like? I'm just, it's boring. I, I got mm. bored. I didn't care enough. I was like, I would just want to go do the next thing that's exciting to me. So that's kind of how I did it for a long time. And nowadays, like I, I am like, it, it's changed so much and I almost hate it because I'll look back on my old videos. Like I have a video, um, wings, I think it's called, mm. uh, 
think I made it for Take Flight, but I don't remember. It was it was one of my first like try hard projects where uh-huh. I, I really wanted to, I wanted to pick a song that I really liked. I wanted to edit it relatively well. I'm pretty bad at editing back then, uh, still am, but you know I, w- I wanted to put in like my movement, what I enjoyed. And dude, this might just be m- nostalgia or whatever it is, but at, even to this day, I can watch that video and just be fully inspired. And I have a really hard time training like that anymore. Because back then, I would just go out and I would toss Sam the camera. I would literally be like, here you go, Sam. And he would know. He would just start filming. And I would do something first try. And it would just be the funnest, like, most random string together of movements. I didn't care about steps. I didn't care about anything. I would just land something and then run over here and do another thing. And then run over here and do another thing. And then, boom, hit a weird dive roll. And, like, that was so much fun to train. And now I'm like, oh, let me pick apart every single step no step out of place like oh i slowed down a little bit there i kind of want to redo that i don't like this line Mm. because i like stuttered a little bit and i i don't know i hate that stuff and i think that's like i don't post that much to instagram anymore like i took a long break because it's just not that fun to train like that to me but it's it's for whatever reason it's hard for me to get back into the mind state of training how i used to train so I just kind of said, whatever, I'm going to put down that's Instagram awesome. for a while and have fun I, training. And so that's what I've been doing over the last probably two months, three months. Um, I want to get to you putting down Instagram, but I also want to tell a story. And then before we even – and then after the story, I want to, like, give you the option of which way we want to go in the conversation. Can we go back to Split, Jason? Um, you just explaining how you only did – almost what I would almost say like a, a, the phrenic energy. Is that the word of like, yeah. like doing everything all the time. It actually, no one's ever, I've never heard anybody talk about training that way ever, except for in kind of this weird way, David Bell. So <laughs> David, yeah, this is crazy. This is like, this is a new idea. Um, it's David kind of trained in the same way as you did. So David, you know, I spent a lot of time with David, he lived in France, um, worked with him for a few years. And he would tell me about times like the day of a thousand where he would pick 10 movements and he would do a hundred movements, you know, 10 exercises. And then he'd do a hundred of each. It might be like a nine foot drop and he'd like take the drop, walk back up, take the drop, walk back up. It would take him eight to 12 hours to do these, the day of a thousand as he called it. So there's days like that where he did reps, the same thing again and again and again and again and again. But when he talks about really the essence of parkour and how he trained, what he talks about is tracing all of every and lease. And he talks about something like he would tell me, in seven hours, I could trace both cities. And so it was this idea that he constantly moved forward and overcoming the obstacle onto the next obstacle. This is how he trained. And this is when I came back from France, what I was trying to teach at the gym and what I've tried to impart on people, but it's, it hasn't really taken root, which is fine. But I love this way. Yeah. And it's the same type of idea of like, you only get the obstacle one time and you're onto the next obstacle. And luckily, every and least has enough diversity that that seems to be plausible in terms of on even the, what you would call the curbs and such, you can balance on and jump between and such. Not a lot of places have that. But Mm -hmm. it just occurred to me that that's kind of a similar way to how David was doing it was you just do the next obstacle and then go to the next one and then go to the next one and go to the next one and go to the next one and go to the next one one for seven hours or eight hours or 12 hours. You in that flow state. Like that's that's the best thing about it. You're just going. Ah. You're just moving. And that's, that's what I love. And I also think um, – uh, I think me and you have talked about this before, uh, about kind of your environment shaping your style. Yeah, totally. Um, totally. And, like, yeah, look, looking back at my movement, for sure my environment shaped my style because I have – and I, if I'm being honest, I don't even really like it. Uh, but, but it is what it is, and it's kind of like how I think about lines now. Uh, our spots in, in Portland – especially the ones that I that I went to a lot were relatively small and compact. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking about like Irving Park, for example. Sure. Uh, if, if you wanted to do a long line, you would have to go to one end and then turn around and come back. And, then turn around <laughs> and, come back. and my style has so much of that in it. I, I'm always starting in one place and then coming back to the next. Uh, and most of the time it's because I'm limited on how much linear – like flow I can actually do like how much forward I can make until I hit a spot that oh well there's nothing else in front of me turn around and come back uh so dude it would it would have been so sick to be in a city that like I could just go 
Wow. No, for sure. You know, that was a theory I had. I mean, it might have been 10,000 or 2010 or 2009 or something. It occurred to me that that the environment shapes the tracer. Yeah. And it was clear to me that tracers in England would develop a particular style based on the obstacles they had. And the tracer in Portland would develop a different style. Mm -hmm. But I've evolved that theory to be something more like it's the environment plus the creativity of the individual. Because you get someone like Pasha and his early videos was he's got like a half tire buried in the sand and some bar, you know, and, and it's like, oh, like if my creativity was so limited in the movement capacity or maybe my ability was so limited that I would have said, I can't train here. Right? It's not a spot. But it's not a spot. Here? But yeah. Pasha in his in his literal, I would call him a genius in terms of his movement creativity and the way he innovated in a way that nobody had before him. Like he found stuff to do. So um, I don't think it's just the environment. I think it's the environment plus the creativity. But there's yeah. no doubt that those go, you know, they ping off each other and, and such. Definitely. Um, here, here, I, either I want to go back to the Red Bull Art of Motion story mm -hmm. or I want to uh, do a hot take and, and hear your reply to it. What would okay. you like to do? Oh, man. Um I'm, I'm always down for hot takes. I like hot takes. All right. All right. Um, I'm actually quite opinionated. And as you know, it caused a lot of controversy. But I've toned down a little bit. And I found out, you know, where the limits are of how you can do it in kindness and whatever. And anyway, I was a I was a mess. I think most of us were messes in our early 20s, right? Yeah, 100%. Um, but, you know, we try to move on and get better. And that's life. So here's the hot take is, in my from my perspective, in my opinion, you are one of the innovators of flow. When I think of parkour, and you talked about this in the beginning, it was very static. It was very uh, one movement oriented. Mm -hmm. When I started, and if you go back and talk to the Lisoa, the tracers in Lis, they talk about it was like power moves or like a Kong with two steps. It was things yeah. like that. And then slowly this grew into kind of lines. But even when we had lines, as you talked about, people weren't into flips and things like that. I was one of them that was like, no pure parkour like when you're talking about purists and anti-competition that was me i was like yeah. they don't have a place in our sport i respected the aom because that was this legit thing and a legit brand but everything else to me was blasphemy and i wasn't interested in the flips and stuff and i thought that that was a fad and the parkour was the real energy i was wrong on most of that by the way but the point is is that that speaks to a mindset that i don't think was uncommon at the time and you were one of the people that came along and started to do, I think we had a video for Take Flight called Flow Motion. Mm -hmm. And you brought this new style. And when I think of flow, I think of you and Foski. You're the two people I think that added more, that kind of broke the barriers of flow in from kind of the rigid parkour context and added something to it that no one had seen before. Of course, other innovators like Pasha had their movement, but, but – there was a, a, a style of flow that you and Foski brought from my perspective, and it's a limited perspective. And so I see you as one of the innovators of flow in the history of the parkour free running journey. How do you respond to that? I mean, shoot, I'll take it. I mean, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let me start with, uh, I got, I definitely have a bit of imposter syndrome without a doubt. And like, I always really. Have. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, I have like, oh, uh, it it's for a, for a lot of different things. Um, but like, if you look at parkour specifically, right there, there was maybe like a two year span, three years maybe, where I was winning or or taking third at like every event, literally every event that I could go to, I was I was winning or taking third. And so, if you just look at that, right just look at like the trophies from that you'd be like oh yeah joey was one of the one of the more dominant and i see even there i don't even want to say the most dominant one of the most dominant like competitive parkour athletes in that time uh and when i look at it so i have people that'll tell me that uh literally my buddy chris who who also owns the gym uh somatic mm -hmm. he says it all the time he's always trying to hype me up he's like oh i know you're joey adrian like you're this you're that i'm like nah man and, and so the way that I look at it is not that. The way that I look at it, and I, I, I'm assuming this is imposter syndrome, is I got lucky. Literally, I can remember being at every single one of those events, every single one, without fail. And I was like, yeah, I'm not. There's no chance I podium this event. Like, no way. This person's way better. This person's way better. This person's way better. And then 
event after event after event after event with these people who in my opinion were like if i was if i was a six on a parkour scale like a, a skill scale to 10 they were like nines like that much better than me and i kept winning and i kept beating them and i kept doing better and everybody's like oh man joey's so good and i was like i don't know man i th I, I swear to god i think everybody's just kind of choking or like maybe my style just fit what the judges wanted or whatever the case may be but like however that is i can never really see myself as somebody that like did that mm. uh so so you you saying that like being an innovator of, of flow doesn't fit in my head like in my head i'm like nah i just doing my thing like i don't know because i look back on my videos and i was like taking a bunch of steps and i was doing this and that and like so it doesn't to me that doesn't ring true mm. but i don't i don't think it ever would with anything for me you know what i'm saying uh, so it's it's hard to say. It's hard to say. It's hard to say. It's possible. It's possible because I've heard that, I've heard that a few times. Like I went to okay. um, I, I went to Kings of the Concrete, the last year. Yeah, last year, and met a bunch of athletes that I hadn't met before. I I know them like uh like Twin Parkour, um, uh Jaw Crew, uh, Jaden Harris I'd met before, um. James James West uh, Ellis, who I'd met before, but he was young, and so that was my first time meeting him since Air Whip, like five six years ago. Uh, all these people, and they were like, "Yo, Joe, you were like the biggest. You were like my number one." Evan uh, Evan Storm, Evan Leslie, like all these people, yeah. and I was just like, I look up to them because I'm like, dude, they are some of the best athletes in the world right now. Like they're mm. the craziest people right now, and mm. they were coming up to me and be like, "Oh man, you influenced my style so much." Like I was watching all your videos, like you're one of my idols and i'm just like nope that's not me but hey thanks man appreciate it you got wow. somebody else not me so it's always weird to hear that and i i it's hard for that to like sink in for me but it's it's cool to hear here and it feels nice but it doesn't sit like that in my head interesting well you're a really humble guy and i think one of the things that speaks to your humility is what you talked about not expressing your opinion about things and that's one thing i've always seen with you is I think I might have said this in the other podcast as well. And if not, I've said it to multiple people. Is it you seemed like controversy or negativity kind of just was like water off a duck's back in that you refused to engage in it. Yeah. And I think all of this speaks to, to this holistic view when I view you and I think other people do too as a really humble person. And I think that's maybe why that you kind of don't see it. But clearly a lot of people do see it. And a lot of people maybe even more qualified than me see it. Uh, which is quite telling who was yeah. your idol do, do you do you have did you have an idol did you have yeah. videos of who who oh you oh you do okay I oh yeah you okay 100%. tell us uh ilabaka daniel ilabaka 100 yeah. uh no no doubt in my mind um daniel ilabaka was my number one idol he just like the way the way that he moved it didn't even matter what he was doing just the way he mm -hmm. moved was 100 percent the in my opinion, like the epitome of movement, he just did it so well. Um, there were there were other guys that like I would take inspiration from, obviously, uh, and and it ever evolving, right? Like there was um, it, it depended on the time. The only one that's like timeless, I would say, had to be Ilabaka Shade uh, Shade's lot, who. Yeah doesn't doesn't train so much or doesn't post so much anymore i hate saying i hate saying i hear people say oh yeah i don't think he trains anymore i'm like well he doesn't post anymore i i ain't gonna talk on if he trains or not because like Look. i'll go months yeah. without posting but like i'm still training every day uh yeah. but but yeah like those those guys definitely um stas as well um pa pasha not so much not to like the biggest extent but that was also just because I loved like his old stuff and then he like kind of took off and it was like almost too mainstream. And I was like, ah, I don't know. Um, but yeah. And then, and then, you know, as, as I went, it was just like whoever was basically in my opinion, the best at the time. So it, like Alfred Scott was up there. DK was up there. Yeah. Um, yep. Right now watching any Ellis Torhall, any uh, Evan Storm, um, 
Nico Van Hole is crazy. Uh, Matma, I really like watching. I, I mean, I could I could make like a huge list right now, but as far as like idols coming up, it, it had to be Ilabaka. That was number one. Yeah, uh, Jason, can we go back to split screen uh, for a bit. Uh, yeah, no, Ilabaka. There's there's no doubt. He was um, to me it was always like David Bell, and then it was kind of like for a while there was like Ilabaka was number two, and there was yeah. um they did some interview or you know some meeting where Ilabaka went to Lise and he and David chit chatted and. I don't know if they had some interpreter because they don't speak the same language, but it was it was kind of like fitting in a lot of ways. It felt like he was the next, he was, like the torch was passing to him in some in some weird way, in some awesome way. It's like like where David was power, Ilabaka was like water or something. There's something about it's like like the Fred Astaire of parkour was like Ilabaka. Anyway, now he's doing rollerblading stuff. You know, yeah, uh, he's doing his thing. He's doing his thing. He's, he's like one of those people that like got to the top of the mountain and was like, all right. Well, I'm here. Where do I go now? Well, I find another mountain or something, you know, or do Dude, something else for fun. You know, I, I I'm not gonna lie, I get that heavily. Yeah. That, really, that's yeah. actually that's actually a big reason why I stopped competing because like it was just getting like monotonous almost. I was like, it, it was going on the third year I think of just like traveling a ton, and mm-hmm. like traveling kind of lost its appeal. I was like, mm-hmm. all right, cool. I gotta go get on another plane for another. 12 hours to go like sit in a hotel room explore a little bit but also be jet lagged like crazy i can't go out too much because i got to prepare for the competition i gotta like have my practice times like i don't know it it was getting a little bit monotonous and i was like okay three years down i i'm going to this next competition for a shot at fifteen hundred dollars (laughs) yeah like what the (laughs) Dude, <laughs> like uh, if you love competing, I guess it's for you. But if you yeah. don't, it's like there's not much incentive for it, right? And, I mean, that, maybe- and to me, it was like okay, I I had gone to every competition that I wanted to. I had podium to every competition that I wanted to. Those were like my dreams. That mm-hmm. was done. Um, the next competitions that were coming up were either just the same one again, mm-hmm. which didn't excite me, or a new one that I didn't care about because it was never like a goal, right? <laughs> And so it kind of felt like I was like, okay, I did, I did what I wanted to with competing. Um, now what's next? And that what's next, I still don't know. Uh, coaching, I love, so that's what I'm doing. But like, it it's it's great for like a daily type thing. But as far sure. as like a grandiose feeling, um, I don't know what I don't know what there is. Like I don't know what to find. I don't know what to look for. Um, it doesn't it, i hate social media i can't stand it honestly like it bugs the hell out of me and then seeing the people that like are are successful with social media it's like there's e- even dude it oh my god oh, wait, i got it okay. i got it <laughs> i want okay rant i was going to i was going to prompt you but you're on a roll let's Bro, go Bro, one time one time i just got to say this one time it pisses me off more than anything literally more than anything to see Ellis Torhall. I love Ellis Torhall. He's dude. He's one of the, he is the best. He's the best period. He's the best. Uh, no doubt about it in my mind. I hate seeing him post one of the sickest, most incredible things any human has ever done in their lives and then get less views, less followers and less, mm-hmm. less, uh, income really. Cause that's what it boils totally. down to less yeah. income than somebody who posts a fucking skit that's like the most brain dead like i i'm dude i'm about to go off but the dumbest thing that i've ever seen in the world that gets like 10 million views and i'm just like no no you know you know we uh we talked about this in the podcast as well the the one i did with wfo a week ago and i think that this was also raven uh, wrote an article for parker.com about this in some ways and I, i think what we're seeing is that a lot of these really talented parkour guys are now chasing the algorithm. Yeah. And so it's like in the critique that Raven had of store is like, what are they doing? Like, they're just, they're like, Oh, we found this hole and we're climbing out of it. Watch us for 15 minutes. And it's like, great. They make three, three, they make 10 grand on the video. And it's like, it just, it's, it's not, it's like, I don't think they actually care. I don't think like they're great at it and maybe they do. And hopefully we can have them on this podcast and talk to them. But when I watch that episode, it's like, 
there's no there's no soul behind this. Like I don't think in their heart of hearts they're like, man, let's go find a, a hole and we have to climb out of and we'll film it and then we'll pay someone to edit the video and we'll put it online and then we'll feel like we were self-actualized. It's like, no, like they want to go and do the caveman five, like that video. Exactly. Yeah. It's Dude, like, that was such a that's, sick video. that's the sick video, you know, but it's like, you know, where's the money? The money's not in the poker world. The money's in other people, right? Because there's yep. 8 billion people in the world and we got yep. like, I don't know how many parkour people we have, but not many. And so it's like, I get it. I get it. I get it. But I'm with you. It's like, or like Bob Reese. I'll call out Bob Reese. He's like, you know, Cookie Monster. Has he Can't skits? Can't say there. that wasn't who I was talking about. All right. And I, it's like, real quick, real quick. I got to say about Bob Reese. The man is a fucking insane athlete. He's Literally. really good. He's, he's freaking so good. good. <laughs> he's so good. And like, I, I've trained with him. He, he's he got crazy jumps. He's got crazy flips. Dude. He's the most innovative. And yet what pops off? The stupid skits. And it like, I hate it so much. Anyways, keep yeah, going. yeah, I'm with you there. He's like hanging, he's like hanging from some I beam, and like the joke <laughs> of the day, and he falls, and it's like, wow, like, but bravo, you got a million subscribers, and yep. you're probably making a good living, and it's like, bravo to you, you know. So it's like I have that balance of massive respect, like massive respect. You found a way, whatever you're doing, like you found a way in a world, in the world, you like hacked the matrix, yep, and great. Like I didn't hack the matrix, I tried, I failed, you know. You hacked it, bravo. Dude, I tried to hack it. I tried to hack the Matrix, and like, I get it, I get it, but I can't. Like, I, I literally cannot. My soul dies. Even, even just doing, like, a simple voiceover, it's. I, I feel like I'm killing myself every time I do that. And like, I have, I have friends, uh, DJ Caden Franco, all three of them. I introduced them to TikTok. I said, guys, you got to get on this. They're paying money and it's giving you stupid views to do like nothing. You got to get on this. And then they got on it and I was like, damn, I, I hate this. Cause like, I didn't, you know, I'm already posting clips to Instagram. Like, cool. I'll post them to TikTok too, but like whatever. And then it started to be like, okay, well now you got to like tell stories. You got to do this and that, which is like, cool. That's great. But like, I don't care to tell a story. And it comes back to that thing. It's like, who am I? to think that somebody cares about what I did today. And like yeah. every time I see a clip like that, I'm like, it just comes off when it, whenever I try to do it, it yeah. just keeps coming back to like, why the fuck does anybody care about what I like, how I did this, you yeah. know, or, or unless it's like a tutorial, in which case cool, but nobody cares tutorial about cool. tutorials, dude. They want to see, they want to feel like they learned something, but they do not want to learn something they want to feel Interesting. they want to feel like they could do what was in that tutorial but they don't actually want the steps to be able to do what's in that tutorial and that's factual i've literally i've i've experimented no, i think with you're it. right i've experimented with it i've made tutorials that makes it seem like it's easy and they pop off and then i've done tutorials where it's like here is step by step this is how you do it terrible they do horrible hmm. and i've literally i've tested them side by side just because i was like dude i got this theory i gotta see and every time it the one that just makes it seem like you can get do it pops off you know um i have a, a similar view and i i think i want to describe it by saying where we view where our view is different from kind of what a lot of these creators are doing is i think that what they're doing is ultimately shallow and so i'll explain it this way like when I started Take Flight, one of the breakthroughs of Take Flight was I realized we could leverage social media for free advertising and build a brand. And so mm -hmm. it was great. And so at one point we were, we were as an I was posting as many as 12 times a day on Facebook, every two hours. I would sleep for four hours and right before I went to sleep, I would post and I'd fall asleep and I'd wake up and I'd grab my computer and I'd post again. <laughs> it was like, this is how I built whatever the social media platform we had at the time. And it worked for a while and it was cool when I was in my young 20s. Then I got to a point where I was like, dude, I'm so sick of posting photos on social media. Like who gives a crap, right? Like yep. what am I adding to the world? And when I look at things now, it's like, okay, let's say Bob Reese. It's a funny joke. You know, maybe we need that in our lives. We need comedy. We need action comedy. It's like bravo. But I'm more interested in things that have deeper resonance. So like I want to do something that in 10 years is still – still has value to the world. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, let's have a conversation that speaks about life or about training or like something deep 
that then someone can say, wait a second, I leveled up my like my spirit by listening to this versus yeah. like, oh, the algorithm has pulled me in. Here's a bunch of funny jokes. And then they've wasted an hour of their time. The creators made some money. Bravo to them. They hacked the matrix. But I'm like, like, what are we doing to each other? Right. Like we're almost like gaming each other into this dopamine fixed algorithmic system. And it doesn't help anybody nope. except some people that make money from it. And some creators probably enjoy it. So like bravo to them. Sure. They hacked the matrix. They found their bliss. Great for them. I don't think it's really helping that many other people, at least proportionally, right? Well, I mean, so, I, I, I would go so far as to say it's it's actually detrimental, like 100%. Because I – so I'll find myself just like scrolling, right? And I'm, I'm – speaking of, you brought up the app uh, – Dude, I I re I remade it. It's so good, but like all I care about is programming functionality. I hate design work. I hate design work, but mm. I can't. So that's why it's not done yet because I just I don't want to do the design work. Um, mm. anyways, I I've thought like I, I have a bunch of I have a bunch of ideas for apps, but I I want to get better at programming. I want to like diversify the the languages that I know. So I'm actually going through um uh couple like certifications couple courses to like learn different languages oh wow and uh for, like coding for for coding yeah yeah um wow. why did I, what, what were you we talking about i'm sorry um, I lost the app, building the app or something like that yeah, yeah building the app uh before that what were we talking about that's my uh, bad i got a different thought and then I, I lost everything i don't i don't know we were talking about <laughs> The difference between making uh, oh it's, it's negative it's negative for people. oh yeah negative it's negative uh so I, I'm going through these courses um and like I'll I'll be busting out a couple lessons or whatever like a couple projects that it gives me and then I'll hit one where I'm like a little bit stuck or like I'll read the words and like the words are big and I get it but I really got to like think about it because it's just like mm. com complex uh mm. and I'll pick up my phone just habitually I'll pick up my phone hop on Instagram or hop on uh, TikTok. And then I'm scrolling for like an hour and like that whole hour that I was supposed to be working on this, I just get locked into literally nothing. And the thing is, I don't want something like I could get on, I could get on and I could like find something that's like, you know, exciting to listen to or something like that sure. I would want to make that resonates. But instead, I just want to shut my brain off. But in doing that, like, what do I do? I literally just pause no i don't pause time i pause my life while time passes by for an hour or two and then i come back and i'm just like wow that was a big waste of time right and that's 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 90 percent of social media stuff like it's not inspiring me to get up and do something it's not inspiring me to do anything it's just like an outlet to unplug my brain and waste time yeah. And I, yeah. that's, yeah. So I, I see it more as detrimental than anything. If I didn't have that, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do that. I'd have to get up like back in the day I didn't, there wasn't, you know, I would get on Instagram and I would just see clips of people that I follow and it, that would inspire me. And I'd be like, okay, well, my brain hurts from studying. So I'm going to go train. And then that would inspire me to go train. Now I see just random clips of whatever the hell it decides to show me and sit on my ass for an hour right right and there's a lot of there's a lot of arguments out there that social media has been a negative force in the world and i think i agree with that on multiple levels but i probably resonate most strongly with the selfish personal view of i get sucked into this and then i lose my time in my life when i can be spending it in better ways and that's yeah that's uh you have to become very cognizant of of the maybe addiction that we have and uh, and then try to find ways around it, like turn off your phone or something. But it's not easy. I mean, I, I, I lose lots of time, I think, every week on social media. And I hate it. And I probably hate myself for it as well, which is kind of weird. But <laughs> yeah. It's just like, oh, it's like, Adam, like, you're so much better than this, man. Like, you, you don't give, you really, Adam, don't give a crap about all this crap that you're seeing. Like, you care about creating or about, like, you know, there's so many other things we can spend our time on and be more productive. Yep. Yep. So I'm with you there, dude. Um, I wonder if we could, if if I you would allow me to read the Instagram message that you sent me about this podcast. Uh, oh yeah, it yeah. has some negative things in it, but yeah, I, I no, no, no. Wanna... send it, send it. I, I'm um, I am not shy about sharing the way that I feel because I'm confident in the way that I feel. All right, well Even I think I, can't kinda, it. I love it, I love it, and and uh, I think every I think you've established a brand where people trust you as someone who's who's humble and kind and loving, and so. Um, 
when you have a criticism, I think people take it in the right way. I think we're able to, I think we should be able to criticize each other in a positive way, like constructive criticism yeah. and have discussions. And sometimes society just doesn't let us do it, but hopefully it allows us this time. Cause I'm going to read this message you sent me. Send it. Um, it says this, uh, just a heads up. This is from you, Joey Adrian, just a heads up. I'm fairly pessimistic, pessimistic about parkour right now. I mean, I love it, but as far as posting content and pursuing it as a career, I don't know where to go with it other than pivoting to action comedy BS. This is what we've talked about. But you yep. go on to say this, quote, I also kind of hate the community, like yeah. cry, laugh face. Maybe that will be good to talk about. Yeah. Uh, why don't you grow? Uh, that surprised me. The first part didn't surprise me at all. The second part does surprise me. And especially because I was talking to someone, uh, Ruben, Ruben, uh, Ruben uh, Roland, who we interviewed for Parker.com just this week. He's the one-legged tracer from yep. Spain. Oh yeah, Who's like twice as good as I as I ever was, and he has one leg. And I'm like, oh, Adam, you suck, man. You suck, Adam. Like, you know, like if the one legged guy is like makes you look like a loser, then you probably were. A loser. Dude, he makes a lot of people look like losers, though. He is so good. It's Isn't incredible. He? Oh yeah. my god. Well, in in his interview, he says that I think more or less his favorite part about parkour is the community is the yeah. friendships. And so then I was like, Oh wait, like a day later or two days later, I got Joey saying, ah, I kind of hate the community right now, more or less. So oh, expand on that. Man. Tell me about that. Well, first, first, I'm not, I would, I would never ever say anyone's a liar. Right. And I don't think he's a liar at all, but I do think what he is calling the community is not what I'm calling the community. Mm. Uh, I will also say it's, so damn easy when somebody asks you a question to what what's your favorite thing about parkour it's so damn easy to just say the community it sounds good it feels good it's not a lie like i like i like the community that i train with i like going to the yeah. gym and training with my community um the community the overall community i i don't like um and it kind of comes down to like the men in black saying of like uh a person is smart but people are dumb. Mm -hmm. uh, it it kind of comes down to that. Like, I don't like the groups that are in the community. I don't like the fact that the the, the community in general is very um, hateful towards, like, new ideas or new things. Or it, it's just, like, so randomly selective with what it is for and against. Um, and I, I can't think of any specific ideas, uh, off the top of my head. I mean, we, we can use like, um, I, I was messaging, buddy. I'll leave, I'll leave everybody's names out of it just in case they don't want to have their names involved in it. Sure. Um, but somebody was messaging me about fig. Um, okay. And, and they were like, man, what, what was the exact thing that they were talking about? Um, and for those who don't know, it's it's the International Gymnastics Federation, and they're running parkour competitions, and there's arguments about the formats, and some athletes support it, and there's prize money, and and so there's different factions that hate it or, or participate or whatever and whatnot. Exactly. And, and some, somebody basically asked, um, if it's a gymnastics competition, uh, can you call yourself a parkour world champion if the gymnastics federation is hosting the event? And I said, yes, of course you can, because it's a parkour competition. Like it's a parkour event. It's a parkour competition. Okay. It's not as it normally is, but yeah, of course you can call yourself a world champion like DK won, And he sh is a, yet again, a world champion. Cause he won. Um, but it, we got, we got into more of a conversation about it and they were asking my opinions about it and everybody's very, very pessimistic about it. And I tend to be like my knee jerk reaction is pessimistic. Like I don't like, I don't like them coming in and doing their thing and this in the Olympics and that and all that. But if I'm being a hundred percent honest, I have not done nearly enough research, uh, and to form an opinion. Cause I don't care. I just don't care that much. Uh, and then they were like, Oh, well like, you know, they started pressing me like, well, why you kind of have to care? Like, what about this? What about that? And this is something I actually want to ask you. Uh, I don't mean to do it on the podcast. I meant to do it privately, but I'm just going to ask. Uh, yeah, man, let's do it. I, I brought up, I actually made the analogy of, okay, well, here's the thing. I've been around for a long time. And yeah, okay, Fig's the new thing that everybody hates, right? But mm -hmm. I seem to remember, you know, rewind the clock eight, ten years ago with 
Adam Dunlap, right? And to bring up some controversy, some controversy, um, copywriting the word parkour. Everyone was so against it. Everyone was so against it. And you said multiple times, and I'm, I'm going to make the analogy that I made. Sorry, there's a bug. Um, Fig keeps saying they want to change the, the formats. They want to change it. They want to make it a dope competition that, that the parkour community can get behind. But the community, our community, the parkour community is like, nah, they're lying. They don't want to do that. They don't care about us. And I'm like, okay, but like, how can you know that without just straight up calling them liars? Like, yeah, you can do that. But like, mm. you can't know that they don't care because honestly, it's in their best interest to care. If, if we all love it, then that's great. Uh, and then I was, I made the analogy of like, I remember eight years ago, whatever, 10 years ago, 15, whatever it was, uh, when Adam was, was with take flight and everybody hated take flight and Adam, because Adam wanted to copyright the word parkour so that big and your, what you said, big companies couldn't come in and take the word and profit off of it. Uh, obvi- and you said, you know, any, any community or any company within the community, any grassroots, good to use it no problem i don't care no worries um but everybody's like no he's a liar he just wants to he's gonna make us pay for this and that and the other thing and all this and i was like yeah but now look at that and adam i what is what's up with that like that's what i that's what i told the person i was talking to i was like adam (laughs) copyrighted the word parkour can he do anything about this maybe i don't know it's tough it's tough well like i can i can tell you about that copyright parkour thing because I think more than anything, it was a big misunderstanding. But, you know, I do empathize with people who who don't trust. And I think maybe in some ways it's not in our nature as humans to trust people outside the tribe. And so, you know, like if Farang does something, like they seem to have the community's trust. They can do whatever they want. Right. Um, if Fig does something, no one's going to trust them because they're they're seen as outsiders. And so Man, you know, every situation is going to be unique, you know. Just to just to ping in real quick, that comes yep. down to so much with the community, though. Like we have all these, we have different cliques that are forming now within the community, mm-hmm. like different styles, different different types of people, and they're all. It, it it I don't know. It always preaches to be so inclusive and everything, but like I'm not gonna lie, I go to a jam and it feels clicky. Weird. It feels mm. clicky. It feels like there's these groups and those groups and like a little bit mm. of little dramas going on. And I'm just like, dude, we're just here to train. Like what is going on? And so whenever there's a group of parkour people, I don't like the community and specifically, especially online. I can't stand it. Mm. Um, people, people throw their opinions out too much without thinking about the counter argument or the other side of it and i i hate that where and when i'm when i'm talking to a person one-on-one in the community a person that is also in the community it's great we have a great conversation but if you ever try to talk in a public forum or to a bunch of people you just kind of get drowned out by a bunch of nonsense i can't stand it okay this reminds me i'm going to relate this to um to parkour and then i'm going to relate it to politics and then i'm going to relate it to humanity so um early in the parkour days what i realized was that everyone was saying oh my gosh parkour is different it's special like it makes me come alive and inspires me in a way that nothing else does and for maybe a little bit i i agreed with it and then i thought more about it and i said you know what that's what everyone says about what they do like the people that find jujitsu or mma or i don't know ice skating or basketball or something like that's that's their passion and i was like parkour is no different like it's 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 not special in the sense that is it special yeah it's different it's unique i love it but it's not special in that it's better than karate or mma or basketball or football or soccer whatever you're playing Agreed. and so it's it's just like another iteration of of a sport of a culture of a group of a movement that's that's finding their way so that's the first part um the second part is what did I say? I was going to relate it to parkour and I was going to relate it to politics, to politics. Right. So then politics is kind of like the same thing. So like, I'll be very open with my political ideas in a, in a generic way. I'm I'm very much a centrist, right. And very much every, every, I don't align with any party. I align with the idea. So like, what are we, what are we discussing? Like, let's find the best way to solve that problem rather than grouping it together in a conglomerate that we call Republican or Democrat that then yeah. gets us out whatever they want. It makes no sense. It's like, that's cultish. Like, let's 
discuss, discuss the ideas. And I have very strong opinions about every idea or most of them. And what I find is that when I sit down with anybody, virtually anybody, and have a detailed conversation with that person, we find common ground. And we find we don't always agree, but we find common ground and we respect each other for the most part, like maybe 80%, maybe you have these fringe 10%, but for the most part, we find this agreement. Awesome. But then you get to the group level and you get on Twitter or something and you start talking about an idea and like, you're, you're a Nazi or you're this, or you're, you know, or you're a communist or whatever yep. it may be. And yep. it's like, immediately. What, what the heck, what the heck, right? <laughs> so this gets now to the last part, which is humanity is, I think this is just who humans are is, and you, and you said it very well in, in one of your quotes, something like, individuals think but groups follow something like that yeah and i think it's just like that's what humans do is once you're part of the tribe you get tribalism you get group think and like welcome to civilization and i think that's probably the pressing issue of our time you're seeing it in parkour but i think at like a mass cultural mass world level we're seeing like tribalism and group think playing out and it's pushing us towards these extremes and these arguments and potentially world war or potentially, right. you know, like locking people in their homes or potentially forcing whatever it may be on people. And so, I, you know, is it any different? Are we, is what we're seeing in Parker any different? I don't think so. It's more like a fractal pattern. We're looking at a micro, right? Yeah, so the parkour down. grows. It just like continues. Like whatever scale yeah. you look at is going to have that manifestation. In Parker, we have that manifestation as this, this, this group think. And, um, and now I haven't experienced it. What you're saying, I want to say that also. What you're experiencing this negativity, like I don't actually experience it anymore. Like the Parker was so negative for me, I wanted to I wanted to quit and leave and just like do something else with my life. And then what I found was I just gave it time, and I just was quiet. And when I'm quiet, nobody comes after me. So it's like, oh, it's like, so like, there's no negativity. Like, and all I do now is like, I'm like, I'll, I'll just share love. So like. You know, if I'm sharing something on Take Flight, it's like, check out Joey or check out Evan or check out Lola. These people are awesome. And then when we write an article for Parker.com, it's like, dude, Ruben's awesome. And, and uh, you know, whatever. This video from Farang was awesome. And this what store, the store awards were awesome. And go help out a, a more Armitage. And it's like, I just want to, like, love and help people. And I'm like, this seems to work. Like, no one hates on me when I love other people. It's like, that's my matrix hack. It but, a lot better. <laughs> If you want to I, be somebody or you want to have an idea, it's like good luck. The group, the tribe, or whatever, the mob. Yeah, and and I'm I'm pretty quiet. Like I, I stay pretty quiet, and I always have. Uh, think a lot and and tune in a lot. Uh, and that's that's where I see it the most. Is like I'll mm -hmm. I'll, I'll see posts. Uh, I'll I'll hear people talking. I'll uh, check out the comments. Like I always 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 I'm always in the comments. Like more in the comments than than watching the content and just like reading people's thoughts, reading what people think. Interesting. And, uh, how they feel and that's where i see a lot of it and i mean i know some of that is just like online stuff um which happens and anywhere that you are online but oh. it's just annoying it just annoys me that's all it is that's all it is and i'm it, to my core i'm i am a anti-social person i don't really hmm. like being around i don't i definitely don't be, like being around a lot of people um at all jams i don't i don't love jams there's too many people um, I find people that I really like being around and then I'm, I'm very talkative, very social around those uh -oh. people. Um, and that was, that was great with the community for a long time because it was just like, mm -hmm. cool, I can, uh, you know, we all have this common ground and everybody's, everybody's nice. And when I focused on like just my interactions, I was like, cool, this is great. And then the more I focused on the other interactions around me, like how other people, were treated in the community or like uh, talked about or, you know, commented on whatever the case is. I was like, wait a minute, why are you being an asshole to that person? Or why, why are you like commenting like negative things for this person or, or like shunning mm -hmm. people that do this or like, I don't know, just having these broad overarching, like ideals that push a large group of people away when it's like, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I, without getting like very specific, I can't, I can't sure. really define it, but yeah. Yeah. And it's, and, so, and sometimes it's good not to be specific because we don't yeah. want to, there's enough exactly. place to, to, we don't want to, you don't want to be the thing you're mad at other people for being. Exactly. And so I wonder that sometimes too, is like, you know, I'll be online and I'll make a snide comment about somebody or something. And I'm like, Am I, am I like doing the negativity that I'm mad at other people for doing? 
and and sometimes I'm like, maybe I am, but then maybe this is, you know, maybe I'm calling some, maybe I'm calling it out. You know, what's that balance? And yep. I'm not sure if there's an answer, but the last thing we want to do is use this podcast to be like, maybe we'll call out Bob Reese for his action comedy. But outside of that, you know, <laughs> the thing is, hey, Bob Reese, hey, Bob love. Reese, though, he's he's, he's, he's Bob, like, he's, he's just being it. Bob. That's all he's yeah. doing, and it's it's working. But yeah, I'll, I'll Actually, say yeah. similar to what you just said. I'll, I've I've had tons of times where like I'll type out a paragraph and then I'll read it really? and I'll just delete it. I'm just like done. Really? Yeah. So many times. So many times. Wow. And that's where I, I just keep I just keep my opinions to myself. Just like nah, it's fine. Well, well. So what do you think? This do you have any ideas for a solution, or is the solution simply to do what you're doing, which is keep your ideas to yourself and try to be a loving, supportive person? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, th- I think a good solution that's worked for me, cause like I'll have, you know, I'll see something and like uh, immediately just like triggered a little bit and want to say something. Uh, and what I always do is two things. One, this is the first one. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is good advice. It's good advice for me cause, cause I have, I have good, um, uh, what's it called? Um, I'm, I'm confident in myself. I am not, uh, depressed about who I am. I like who I am. I like who I am. Um, so the first thing that I do is I'm like, who the fuck am I? Who who am I? Like, mm. I'm not anybody. Like, my yeah. opinion on this doesn't matter. Like, that's the first thing that I do to, like, kind of just chill myself out a little bit. And the you second one yourself. is... I check myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the second one is um, before I, like, comment on something, I, I just look at it from, like, every angle. I look at what are they going to yeah. say... What are they going to say back from this? And what are they going to like think slash feel from this? And if it's like mm-hmm. going to start mm-hmm. a decent conversation, like a, a, a good conversation, then okay, cool. I'll post it. If they're just going to get upset from it or like if it's going to make them feel bad about themselves or whatever that is, then I'm just like, nah, just get that out of here. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't need to be said. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And those, those, that's, that's all I do. But that ends up most of the time in me just keeping my mouth shut and not commenting yeah uh yeah you know it's tough to change somebody else you know in fact uh when i say tough it's a joke because i think it's probably impossible yeah but um yeah i think uh, you're onto something there so maybe that's something that i can learn from and other people can learn from too um here's what i'm thinking i'm thinking uh we've had an awesome conversation what i'd love to do is kind of speed run through all the questions that that uh parker.com followers wanted us to ask you yeah and then if it brings up anything we can run with it if not uh maybe we'll close it out after that uh, i mean i am curious to hear a little bit about somatic movement and what you're doing there so maybe we, we kind of do that maybe we talk about cool. these we, we speed run the the fan questions and then we talk about somatic and then uh We'll call it a day. Sounds Does that good. That sound good. Yeah. All right. We're gonna run through these, and I'm thinking like speed run. So maybe there's there's one or two really good questions here, really good that actually are probably might need a few minutes of an answer, but other ones are like one word or two words or something like that. So let's just uh, see what we got. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Oregon. I live in Arlington, Texas. And is it from Portland, Oregon, or are you Portland, from like somewhere? Yep. Ch- Portland, okay. I wasn't actually sure about that. I didn't know if yeah, it was yeah. outside Portland or if you were like Gresham or something like that. Nah, Portland, Oregon for like 30, well, like 29 years and then Texas. Okay, this is the next question from Quentin.pk on Instagram. What's your favorite and least favorite way parkour has evolved? Ooh. Yeah, oh that's a really good question. God, that's a great <laughs> question. Can't really um, speed on that one. Yeah. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, my favorite way, let's, let's, well, let's start with my least favorite. Cause I keep going on to the negative things. Let me start with my least favorite way, dude. I cannot stand how people use transition moves. I hate it. I hate it so much. So oh, like the useless moves, like a, like a yes, butt roll or something. Yes. But even like, okay, I, I've, I've always made it a rule or a light rule in my lines uh-huh. or like the way that I think about lines to, um, have a purpose. There's a purpose. Mm. This move has a purpose or going to this place has a purpose and if that if all that purpose is is to set up for the next move that's not a purpose like if you like let's say you're trying to get on top of a block to 
do a move off the block. Like, yeah, that's a purpose, but like find a way so that that move that gets you on top of the block sets you into a position to get off the block. And now like you're doing that move to set into the next move. Now, a bad example would be I don't like seeing like a safety vault to a butt roll to a weird worm move just to cover some space across the ground. Like, I don't know. There, there's all these tiny little just ugly things that people are doing for no reason other than, mm-hmm. well, I needed a couple extra moves in my line, so I put a couple extra moves in my line. And I think it looks really bad. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer. I love free running. Free running is a mix of parkour and flips. I don't like just flips that much. Uh, and I don't like this weird, like, dancey thing that free running has become. Mm. Uh, I like I like having free running with jumps, with movement, with speed, with power, with purpose, yeah. and mix in cool, flowy, flippy things. That's what I like to see. Mm. Um, now, right. my, my favorite place that it's evolved to is uh, it's just getting it's just getting crazy. It's literally just getting crazy. Like <laughs> it's to, crazy, right? To to the to the strongest definition, anything that can be thought of, we are now doing, and it's getting done like every single day. So it's, it's that's cool. That's cool. Just seeing it's, uh, expectations shattered. It, it's kind of cool. It's, it, what's not cool about it is when you look back and you realize, for someone like me, that. I was never good at anything. You know what I mean? Like, like, Dude, like I have that like, same feeling. there's like seven year olds that are like better than I ever was. And I'm like, is that, was I like that bad? Or is it just like, has the level evolved so much? And I'm like, it's for me, it's probably both. Cause I was never that good. Right. But it's still like, you know, you see these teenagers and you're like, teenagers are doing today what we thought, like it, it was either thought to be impossible or it was never even imagined. So it was outside the realm of consciousness. Either way, it pushed this boundary. You like got teenagers that are like still, you know, like, having their mom make lunch for them, you know? And they're still like better than you ever were. And you're like, oh, well, my life was a waste, you know? What helps me though, what helps me though is, uh-huh. okay, so now you can teach like a, a relatively skilled young kid a castaway fast. Like they can learn a castaway quick, right? Everybody can do castaways, right? When uh-huh. I learned castaways, and this, this helps me put it back into perspective. When I learned castaways, I only knew one other person that I had ever seen do a castaway. So that helps me to put it into perspective. Like Mm. right now you go anywhere, you watch any video, you will see the lowest, most disgusting, craziest castaways you've ever seen. Rewind the clock eight years, nine years, and maybe two, three people were doing castaways. So it was a different time. It was a a different different time. time. It was a different time. We didn't suck that bad is what I'm trying to say. (laughs) It's all about, it's really about your skill within uh, your peers and the time that you're there. And we see this in all sports. Like yeah. we, tr- we compare, like if you go to basketball and you compare like John ja Morant or Russell Westbrook, you compare them to like the players in the seventies and the players in the seventies in the NBA are just like, what were you doing? You know, like, did you even right. know how to dribble a, did you know how to dribble a <laughs> basketball? Like you're an idiot, you know, but it's like, it's just, it's just the era, the era evolves. Yeah. And for some reason, parkour has like an era is like three years or something. So we're in like the, like the 12th era and it's crazy. I don't know. It is um, daunting as hell to start though. Like if I was starting parkour now and seeing what people are doing, I would be terrified to start. Cause like the skill level is just at such a, what I would put like as an unattainable level for like mm-hmm. somebody that's never done it before. That's, mm. that's kind of scary to think about. And it's just going to get better. And people are going to be seeing that, and like, we don't have, we don't have enough ways to like bring newcomers up, to like, make that seem attainable. But anyways, that's that's more for other times. Yeah. Um, next question. This is from Josh. You know Josh. What's Josh's last name? Josh's fault is 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 his idea. Oh, oh my God! What is his last Toasty name? Toasty lizards. Toasty lizards. I don't know. He's my I, old student, bro. That's crazy. I know, but uh, look, Miller, Josh Miller. Josh, Josh Miller. Miller. I'm telling like people for your IG, like have your first and last name, because if you don't, then I don't even know who you are. It's like <laughs> Josh, it's Josh. It, it's, yeah. He does the crazy descents, and he's awesome. What What do you think of from Josh? Says, what do you think of the new ski tricks in the sport? <laughs> uh, <laughs> nah, they all right. They all right. Uh, here's what I'll say. Some are cool. 
And I, I've made this mistake way too many times uh, when I was younger in parkour. Uh, a lot of things at first to me look so stupid and there in my opinion there's a lot of things in that kind of realm mm. that for lack of a better term i think are stupid but but i've been around long enough to know stupid things always evolve into really cool things and you need those stupid things as a prerequisite to the cool things they'll teach Whoa. your body a way of moving that it needs to understand in order to do the cool thing um and so as much as i i don't really like a lot of it there is a lot of it there there's aspects of it that is really cool and without doing some of the dumb stuff you're not you're probably not going to be able to or you're going to have a much harder time learning the cool stuff uh, mm. so i can't hate on it too much i can't hate on it too much can't hate on it too your, much i, it's not your I style, like the cool though. stuff that comes out of it not my style right, not but there style. is cool stuff that comes out of it uh, next question from Mally. Mally, uh, I can't say the last name. Do you think that progressions are the most effective training methods? And I'm not exactly sure what that question means, but we can into it probably what they were getting at. I think yes. Uh, I think I think progressions are really good. I also think um, sometimes if you have a safe setup, you can skip progressions to kind of get what you don't get. Uh, to better understand what you don't what your body doesn't get and then use a progression to gain that feeling that you're missing and then apply that into the trick again mm. um and this is that's specifically talking about like uh flips and tricks and things like totally. that um obviously for jumps i think yeah progressions are very important uh don't just run and jump it you know something that you're not sure if you can make measure it out and then try it and then go do it Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think so. R2, Ryland Lanigan from Gresham, okay. says, please ask him, when is he going to go live on Twitch again? I knew I knew he was going to ask it. I knew he was going to yeah, ask it. Yeah, he wants you, man. He wants you I there. Know. He loves I it. I know. I used to do League streams, uh, League of Legends streams, and mm -hmm. they were they were my only watchers. So I appreciate uh... you, boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, nah, probably, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff. There's, dude, I got a lot of ideas that I want to do. But sure. also, right now, I'm, like, so deep into um, coding and programming uh, and, and doing stuff with the gym that everything that I want to do is, like, on the back, or I, all the other things that I want to do is kind of on the back burner. But I have a lot of, a lot of ideas uh, that I'd like to do at some point. Flipping Lukey says, is he coming to Europe anytime soon? Ooh, I got well. Okay, uh, I can't talk too much. I don't think. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe in May. There's there's a chance in May, um, but probably not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'll see. We have some budget to take flight this year, so maybe hey! maybe, get your, maybe get your ticket. Maybe get your ticket. Yeah, we tried to bring it. Lola. We tried to bring Lola on the team, and she she just got on the Red Bull team. And so Lilu. she said, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I was thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Lola and Lilu, they're both great. They're both uh, yeah, yeah, trying yeah. out the take flight shoes. Lilu loved them. Uh, anyways, yeah, Lilu, Lilu. I got the names confused. Lilu said, uh, well, I've got a couple sponsors this year. I, I didn't want to overload myself. So I love She's the shoes. Very but smart. So I, I actually, I was like, that's the best. That's the best no I've ever heard. You know? Yeah. But yeah, anyway, I was nice. thinking, I was thinking, okay, we got someone in Europe who's going to cost a bunch of money, but uh, now that. That she's not on the team, then maybe we got some money, more money for uh, Mr. Joey Adrian. So we'll find something. You and Evan, you and Evan. Yes, uh, dude. Let's see. Um, uh, two more questions, last two, and then the second one will lead to kind of our final conversation point. Cool. Uh, Het. Oh, Het. Yeah, Het was a, a Het Barba Haaya. He's from India. He was actually uh, helping us at parkour.com to do some of the social media recently uh he says what type of training do you think one should do to avoid injuries and for longevity all right uh i do have an answer for this one um i think i saw this question somewhere uh did you send it i don't know either I mean, way it, it doesn't matter it was uh, a comment it was common public it comment. was a comment it was a comment that's what it was i saw that comment um and i was actually thinking about that and i think the biggest thing that people overlook is if you have something that's bugging you, fix it. Don't wait until it becomes a problem. 
And so a mm. really good example of this is I was running, like, uh, I, I started running, and I was like, I'm just going to run every day. And I had no goal at first. I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, got, got up to uh, two miles a day. And then uh-huh. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this for a year and just see how that goes. So I went like a year and a half, I think. Um, oh, wow. Did two miles every day. And then got COVID, stopped for a while, and now I'm running again. But uh, anyways, something, something happened, and my knee started bugging me. And I was like, what the heck is going on with my knee? And it didn't seem like it was from running, but I was like, I didn't do anything else to it. So I, instead of letting it become a problem, because it, it was just a minor annoyance, it was, uh, and then one other thing that I noticed is my IT band felt tight. And I was like, maybe these are related. And so every night I would just try to do a little bit of research, like look at anatomy. My sister's a physical therapist. I would ask her some questions um, and then just take like a, a lacrosse ball and start like rolling out places. And I found I had this spot like in my, in my hip, like right here, you can't see it, like right there mm-hmm. that yeah. I had to roll out. And that just released everything. Um, wow. and every time that I have little problems, uh, whether it's like a little ankle thing or a leg thing or a shoulder thing or whatever it is, I don't, I don't take it for granted. I fix it. Whether that's okay. I think I have this shoulder problem because my back is weak. Okay. I start working on my back and I start stretching the, the pec, right? Like I start trying to equalize everything as quick as possible, fix the thing before it actually hurts. It'll be it'll be an annoyance first. Fix it then before it hurts, and then you should be okay. Um, as far as getting injured, try not to get injured. But like if that happens, that happens. Fix it before you go back to training. For sure. Well, you know what can lead to injury is not taking care of those small things. So yeah. your knee starts hurting, you don't worry about it, and then one day you mess up your knee because yep. you had some muscle tension. So a problem delayed is a problem magnified. Exactly. As they say. So and it's usually, um, from my experience, it's usually just one spot is too tight and another spot is too weak. So you mm. got to strengthen, strengthen the weak spot and loosen the tight spot. And that usually for me, that's fixed everything. Uh, I haven't run into anything else yet. So I'll add like one cent to this, uh, which is less than two cents. And that's that I've tried foam rolling lately and it's, it's like a miracle. I'm like, Oh my gosh. Like I, I, cause I had some tightness in my right knee and then I just rolled my IT band. Like yep. I would have to work out for 45 minutes before the muscles released. Yep. And I, I, I rolled it for 20 seconds and I go, it's gone. Like the muscle just relaxed. So I'm on the, I'm on the foam rolling train for sure. Yeah. I've been it's, foam rolling and I do like a 20, 20 minute stretch sesh every night before I go to sleep too. Excellent. So. I need more of that. I need some more, uh, more stretching. Um, oh, here we go. Last, last question, which kind of leads us into the somatic movement. Cause I said like, we should end, what are you doing with the gym? Deandre, the team. So this question, you can answer it and then it can lead us into the conversation. Cool. Willie MOV says, ask him, ask him how, ask him, he, ask him how he met the somatic crew. Oh yeah. How, uh, how you and how you and those guys met, how that started. I, that was you again, actually. Um, it was, I'll, I'll try to make a long story short. Uh, it was Air Whip 2016, actually. It was, it was between uh, Art of Motion and Air Whip. And you hit me up. I had just gotten home. And you said, hey, uh, we got this commercial in Texas. And, I, and you told me the dates. And it was like the same weekend as Air Whip, which oh, was like right. a week or two away. That's and right. I was like, yeah. I was like, I mean, yeah, I'd love to, but also I'm going to Air Whip. Like, I, I got to go to Air Whip. And they were like, oh, I mean, you could just, like, go after because, like, you're going to get enough money to just go after and not worry about it. And I was like, all right, we'll see, see if they'll, like, push it a little bit and, like, maybe I can do both. And so you worked some magic. And it ended up I was able to do both, which was great because that was my the year that I took first to Air Whip and then flew from Air Whip to Texas, which you hooked me up with a place with DeAndre. Um, and he was staying with the whole somatic crew in a house. Uh, and so I slept on the couch while I did that commercial gig. And uh, that's how I met DJ. We trained. Um, and it was sick. I loved I loved staying at the house, like met Nige, uh, met Chris, met met everybody down here. I basically met everybody over that week period. Um, loved it. And then I was like, dude, I'm going to no, I'm going to come back and we're going to sesh. And then a few months later, I flew back 
and I just started loving it down here. Um, helped helped uh, paint slash build their first location, the first gym of Somatic. Uh, came down and helped build the second location of Somatic. Uh, and then eventually was like looking for a place to live. Um, me and my girl wanted to get a house, so we were searching houses in Texas uh, and talking about them with like coming on as part owner of the gym. Uh, and that all worked out. We found a place 10 minutes from the gym. Now we're running that, um, trying to do big things, but, uh, that's, that's how I met them. Um, and then right now, yeah, like I said, we're just, uh, there, there were a lot of issues with the, um, with the, uh, Zen planner system, like the way that it was set up. Uh, So we had, we had to fix a lot of that. Um, a lot of like the internal structure, um, got a lot of that sorted out and now we're just trying to regrow clients. We had a flood at the gym actually. Oh yeah. Five months ago. And videos. Yeah. I was at, I was at, um, SPL doing commentary. So I was in Canada. DJ just sends me a video. He's like, bro, gym's flooded. I was like, what the heck? (sighs) There's like, like six inches to a foot of water, just like all over the floor. Everything was soaked. They had to like squeegee it all out. Um, so we had to close down for, for a while because of that to rebuild. I think we did it in about a week. We closed down a little bit longer than that um, just to make sure that we could air everything out and get everything good to go. But that that was really unlucky because we also had to close um, before that for a while. And it just ended up being like that month we were closed more often than we were open. So we lost a ton of members. Uh, oh, my gosh. And now we're we're we've rebuilt from that uh, and we're back cruising. But for the last couple months, it was just like, man, this is this is rough. But luckily, started to GoFundMe, got a bunch of money for that. Um, was able to get new flooring. Uh, we got rubber flooring in. Uh, had to replace a lot of the wood. Um, right. Had to completely redo the build out because you know things were getting disgusting from the water. So. But yeah, things are good now, and now we're just trying to trying to keep cruising. I think we got a solid. Um, our, our base is solid, like the base is rock solid, and now we're just building on top of that. Yeah, you know, I think it was I want to say like eight years ago or something that I I put out some article, and I said I think the if if you want a career in parkour, the the stable thing is to start a gym. Because there's always going to be people who want to learn. There's always going to be money for people to pay for their kids. And it's a really nice uh, business model in the sense that you have recurring revenue. So, you know, the problem with a company like Take Flight is if someone buys a pair of shoes, it's like, great, you know, and our margins are high. It's great. First of all, the product costs money to make. So Mm -hmm. it's not 100% margin. And then second of all, they have their shoes. But if you have a member at a parkour gym, like, first of all, like it's it's all – every new member doesn't cost anything, right? In the sense of if they're taking group classes and then if they're a member, they're paying you every month. So you got this recurring revenue. So it's a sweet model and it's something that you can do until you're 80. You could teach parkour or be a trainer or something. So never going to age out of it. Uh, You just got to get that base, that solid base. And if you can get there, then, you know, and there's a lot of pitfalls along the way. A flooding is not one I've thought of, but obviously (laughs) financial management and other things, Add on flooding, you just never know what's going to happen at your gym. Yeah. So it's, it's not a walk in the park, but if you can get through it, it seems like a great model. Dude, we have uh, we have waited the storm though, made it through COVID, uh, made it through that. Okay. Um, that was a, then, that was the storm, man. Wow. That was the storm, and then yeah, the literal Oof. storm where we got flooded. So now the gym the gym has been through more than any other gym that I've heard of. Uh, well, aside from one that got like blown up. I think it was what it was like in syria i think and it got oh yeah something like that i thought but, it was oh gosh yeah yeah cool. this, this is a while back but uh yeah they started to go fund me i think they hit their goal though so that's that's good aside from that gym our gym's been through a ton and we made it through so uh fingers crossed that things are smooth from here and we should be chilling um got a really good student base we got uh our our level fours are getting insane. That's our highest highest class right now, mm. dude. They're getting good. We were just talking the other day. Uh, Grant Grant EO on uh, Instagram. If anybody wants to check him out, he's getting very good. He's uh working the front desk for us as well. 
but uh just yesterday he hit a jump that was like it was just he was just casually jumping around and he hits this jump and he's only 17 16 i think he's 16 hits this jump and dj's like wait a minute i can't do that jump i just looked at dj i was like i can't do that jump either what and then we just like looked at each other we were like wait that was really big and i was like dj you want to hear the worst part because dj works out like four times a week to jump further like that's what yeah, he does. Yeah, he's like he right? does like squats. He does like squats. That's what I'm awesome. saying. I was like, DJ, you want to know the worst part? You want to know the, the most depressing part? You know how often Grant lifts? Zero times a week, dude. And he just <laughs> blew by our max jump. Like, oh my god. No, this kid's gonna be insane. All of our level fours are are popping off. So check them out if you guys get the chance. Awesome. And how can people check you out? Uh, what are the what's the places to follow you? How can they support you or just be more in tune to you in case you decide to start <laughs> posting again one day? I, I'm going to try to keep posting. Uh, it's, Instagram's a cool thing because it uh, definitely Instagram is the main one. Uh, that's where if I am posting, Instagram is where I will be posting. Uh, and Instagram's great because they have their reels pay thing just straight up. I will guaranteed post like two or three times a month because they just give you money for it. So once you, you, you get up to like $100 or $110 and then it like drops off a cliff, but getting the 110 is nice to do every month. So I'll always be posting a few times a month. Uh, so you can follow me there at uh, Joey Adrian or maybe Joey Adrian PK. I'm not going to lie. I don't actually know. Also follow the gym, uh, Somatic Movement Gym at Instagram. Uh other than that, for me, like that, that would do it. You can just look me up on pretty much if I don't have my name, if it's not Joey Adrian or Joey Adrian PK, then I'm probably not on the platform. Uh, I passed up Snapchat because both of those were taken. So I was like, eh, I'm not getting on Snapchat. So <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Well, Joey, it's been awesome talking to you. It's been good. Um, I felt like we caught up a little bit too, which was uh, a great great thing to do I, I i know what i feel like uh i revere you in a way that i'm like oh man how do i get how do i get joy to talk to me like <laughs> so then when i was when i was this interview today i was like man i hope joey shows up i hope he shows up Dude, I'm so, here. always um, always uh so i appreciate your time and i uh, love what you're doing and if we can support you in any way at parker.com then you just let us know anytime 100 percent. Uh, we're cheering for you so keep doing you keep being you all right, man. I appreciate it, Adam. It was great catching up, and uh, hopefully we'll do it again soon because we got to talk more. You're a good, good guy to talk to. All right. I appreciate your perspective. You're an awesome dude. Thanks, Joey. All right, bro. Take it easy. All right. See you.